Hello, this is a virtual microscopy slide of a case of tuberculous epididymo orchitis, and we are looking at the tunica albuginea here of the testis. In this area is the testicular parenchyma, so roughly just demarcated here. And this is the region of the epididymis. Let's have a quick look at the uninvolved testicular parenchyma first. And we can see the seminiferous tubules within which are maturing germ cells. In the intervening stroma, there are some collections of plump polygonal cells with abundant eosinophilic granular cytoplasm, and these are Leydig cells. In the epididymis, most of the parenchyma has been destroyed and replaced by necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. However, we still see some residual ducts, and these are lined by columnar cells here. We can still see some evidence of stereocilia. But most of the parenchyma has been replaced by these rounded structures, and these are all individual necrotizing granulomas. For example, in this particular area, we can see that there is a central area of granular eosinophilic necrotic material, and at the periphery, we can see these epithelioid histiocytes admixed with lymphocytes. And if we move around, we can see numerous multinucleated giant cells some of these will have the nuclei arranged in a horseshoe configuration, for example, this one, as well as this cell here. And these are known as Langhans giant cells. Langhans giant cells are frequently seen in TB. However, they are not specific for tuberculosis. Moving around, we can see, again, many eye-catching Langhans giant cells within epithelial granulomas. And here is an area of coalescent granulomas with a very large area of necrosis. The necrosis appears as granular amorphous eosinophilic material. And in some areas with these degenerating cells or dying cells with lots of pycnotic and chirorectic nuclei. This necrotizing granulomatous inflammation has spread into the testicular parenchyma, as you can see here. And a similar process is present amongst the seminiferous tubules of the testicular parenchyma proper, where again we can see this central area of necrosis surrounded by viable epithelioid histiocytes and peppered with many of these Langhans giant cells. Let's learn a bit more about tuberculosis of the testis. TB of the testis often occurs as a result of hematogenous spread from the bloodstream, and often the original site of infection is the lung. Uncommonly, it can also be a result of spread from the urinary tract structures, including the prostate and the bladder. These patients, whether they have epididymitis or epididymal orchitis, can present with a unilateral scrotal swelling, and this swelling can mimic malignancy both clinically as well as on imaging. There may also be associated pain in the scrotum, which can radiate to the groin or lower abdomen. And if untreated, there may also be the complication of sinus tracts forming within the scrotal skin. This is an example of TB epididymitis, and the case that I showed you on the virtual microscopy slide shows not only involvement of the epididymis, but also involvement of the testis, giving rise to epididymo orchitis. There may also be associated hydrocele, and sometimes patients may experience systemic symptoms of fever, weight loss, and night sweats. Grossly, the epididymis is enlarged and nodular, and if there is also involvement of the testis, that would also give rise to enlargement and caseous necrosis within the, the testicular parenchyma too. This 
cheesy yellowish appearance is what we see in cases necrosis and the epididymis is often adherent to the testis. There is a separate video describing the gross features of TB epididymitis on a virtual pathology specimen, and this can be found in our free online pathology resource, PathWeb. Registration is completely free, and the link is in the video description. Microscopically, the key finding is that of necrotizing granulomatous inflammation, sometimes with fibrosis, and the Zeal-Nielsen stain would reveal the presence of acid-fast bacilli. PCR can also be performed on the epididymal or testicular tissue that is involved and reveal the presence of mycobacterial organisms. And here we can see the epididymis, a few of the residual ducts are visible, but the parenchyma is largely replaced by these very well-formed epithelioid granulomas. Here is a high magnification view of a Langhans giant cell in which the nuclei are arranged in this horseshoe configuration. And here is the area that we looked at earlier with this geographic area of necrosis surrounded by granulomatous inflammation. High magnification reveals this eosinophilic amorphous appearance of the necrotic areas and at the periphery we can see these viable epithelioid histiocytes, multinucleated giant cells. Here again are areas of granulomas where you can see very very prominent Langhans type multinucleated giant cells and we can see some residual ducts from the epididymis that are viable in between the large granulomas and here is a higher magnification view again showing some residual ducts and here is a granuloma where the epithelioid histiocytes are seen in aggregation together with Langhans type giant cells. Hence in summary this is a case of tuberculous epididymoocitis in the testis where we can see necrotizing granulomatous inflammation within the epididymis and that has spread to involve the testicular parenchyma. Thank you.